what the first one is. So I'm sure. gonna try Chardonnay. Okay. Uh, back one more. Back one more. We'll start with the Chardonnay. Okay. Yeah. Chard, Pinot. Um, my free. Not even bone dry style of reason either. You're looking at about 10 grams of sugar per liter, so it's just enough to bring out some of that sweetness. Or that fruit, sorry. If you make your reasons really dry, you get more mineral, more limestone, or that chalk comes out. This is going to kind of sit nicely between the bone dry and the super sweet. Just enough sugar to bring the green apples out, the citrus, the lemon on the nose and the palate, um, but not enough for it to be like a sweet like German reason or anything. It's a lot easier to drink. So a little sugar really helps to bring that fruit out. Um, very easy style, really good vintage on that one, 21. Light red did really, really well that year. So should uh, be nice and honestly it's cranberry juice, that's the easiest way I can describe that. So shard over here, more tree fruit. It's like white peaches and pears, green apples. Um, like I said, with the Pinot, just a little bit of sweetness to bring the fruit out to make it a little brighter, but this is like a really nice summery Chardonnay. It doesn't have any of that butter, that richness that you get from those like French or Californians. Really easy, uh, like I said, summer Chardonnay, which is in a real plan for them. So peach wine was kind of, uh, after all the jam and all that, after the, to get all the peaches out of the way, peach wine was the number one. We actually had the peach wine before we had grapes on the property because when you plant vines, it takes a couple years to get your first usable vintage off them. So peach wine was made in the time that the grapes were taking their first couple years to get to full size. Because even like year old grape vines literally look like someone took a twig and like shoved it in the ground. Like they're so skinny and completely useless. So we discontinued it after that initial period and then uh, got some uproar, some backlash, and brought it back to the States with 40% of our total production. It was our number one selling wine in the period. Uh, 200,000 bottles of that get produced a year, and they sell it every single year. So we don't do too bad on the peach. It's our number one vibe. It's going to be kind of sweet regardless, but this guy we bring it up a little bit because it's a really easy, uh, really easy style of wine to get white wine drinkers into first and foremost. Um, same notes as those normal Bacos, so really beautiful, nice smoky blueberries, some cooked like blackberry notes. It's all that black berry flavor, um, and like that smoke. Baco's defining character is that smoke, so bring it up a bit in the nose. Some of that sweetness there helps to mitigate that sugar uh, while still keeping it like really easy to drink. Nearly as sweet, and it's gonna have a lot more acid to bring a little bit of balance to that food. So, Vidal, very tropical varietal, a lot of mango, a lot of pineapples, lychee, like star fruit, guava, like incredibly tropical. Um, a little bit of honey caramel on this one too, but nowhere near the amount that you're gonna get at an ice wine because on this guy, higher acid. Generally, those um, like richer caramel notes are a product of really high sugar content. So, even though like you're looking at 110 grams of sugar per liter, so it's basically a tenth sugar by weight. Uh, you're not going to necessarily get a lot of that richness coming off. It's a very fresh style of dessert. And then your baco, to wrap you up over here, 